I was intimidated when I turned the corner. It's just a big TP burner. I was just beside myself. No way. And I turned around, went back, and then my dad says, I'll go with you. So he come down and they hired me right off. Never, no messing around. He just said, yep, you can start at 2.15. The thing is, my first job was between college years, and it was for Pinkham in Fort Kent. And I just went in, and, and they knew the, fa uh, Mr. Pinkham knew the family. My dad worked for him, and he knew the family. And I just went in looking for a job as a mechanic. And I only had one year in at technical college, and they put me to work. And I worked there that summer, and, and it's like, I, uh, well, I did everything. We even hauled hay for the horses because it was horses back then. And, uh, and I went back to school. And then uh, after I got out, after I graduated, uh, I went back and I asked if I could get a job. And this was going to be a steady job because I was all done with school. And they said, yep, yeah, you can start Monday. And Friday, I got a letter from Uncle Sam saying they wanted to see me, so I went to see Uncle Sam. And I applied for a heavy equipment school, maintenance, and I ended up at Fort Belvoir. And that was my basic training for the maintenance field or the mechanic field, you know. And then when I got out of the service, I... Uh, I went to a couple of different places in Fort Kent because we were living in Fort Kent at the time. And uh, I uh, was not very much satisfied with the rate. Of course, it was only a buck fifty an hour. So think about it today, it's a little different. And I went to Pinkham's, and uh, uh, when I drove in, I was just a young fellow, 23, I think, 24. and. Uh, I was intimidated when I turned the corner. It's just a big TP burner. I was just beside myself. No way. And I turned around, went back, and then my dad says, I'll go with you. So he come down and they hired me right off. Never, no messing around. He just said, yep, you can start at 2.15. So that was a little better. Of course, I was married at the time and uh, I started work uh, September 4. 1967. I'll always remember the date. And from there, it's history. Yeah, I stayed in the garage till 1967, and I was working on uh, bulldozers, cranes, cable cranes, tractor trailers, until I went salary and retired my tools. Well, 67 was uh, 67 to 76, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nine years, nine, ten years. Mm -hmm. And then I just, the one thing was I had a good crew. I mean, there was a real good crew there. And uh, they knew what they were doing, and I just supervised. That's what I did. Did a lot of engineering. And, uh, yeah. But other than that, everything was pretty good. I mean, one thing, didn't have enough math. i got to have math. Got to stay, stay, stay with that because I can remember setting up a uh, motor and gear reducer drive unit for a conveyor. I knew how fast the motor turned and I knew what ratio the gear reducer was and I had to figure out how, fa how fast the belt would turn to move the board. and. Uh, Took me about five or six hours to figure that out. Now, there was an engineer there, a good friend of mine, and I took him the information. I said, here's the information. I want to know how fast, and I already had the number. I want to know how fast that belt turns. Fifteen minutes. Fifteen minutes he had the number here. Yeah, okay. Kick myself out the door. I went, you know, but that's the way it was because I, I didn't have enough math. I had to figure everything out, so it was a little a little hard, but other than that, everything worked too. Yeah. 
I really don't know because I don't know if it's because I have a mechanical ability. I don't know, but uh, uh, the reading and understanding of technical manuals is very, very good to have because if, if you read it and you don't understand it there, forget it. And, and I was able to do that. I mean, blueprints, reading blueprints, understanding them, I was able to do that. That's a big thing, you know. I think it's, it's ongoing, mostly on the job. If you've got a, a mechanical ability and, and you come here to be hired as a millwright or into any sawmill to be hired as a millwright, you walk in the door and you're going to be horrified. It's going to be intimidating. And that's the thing. I mean, if you've got a mechanical ability, you can take care of the job ongoing, on the job training. It's, everything is different. It's, today you could be doing this, t tomorrow you'll be doing something else. And it's, uh, yeah. I really don't know. The way I was brought up, probably, because uh, my dad was a hard worker, and uh, I, I just fell into it. I mean, it's automatic, and uh, it, it, it's difficult today. Of course, that was a long time ago, but it's difficult today because you got a lot of people that I don't know. They just don't want to work. I I don't know what it is. I enjoy it. And I've been retired for four or five years and I'm still working, <laughs> so I enjoy it, you know. Uh, the first thing is, if, if you're a shift millwright, you set up, you start up the equipment, help starting up the equipment that, that runs for the mill, and then keep it running through the course of the day. You, uh, an operator has a problem, report to the operator, find out what the problem is, take care of it. That's the shift millwright. You know, he's got to be on his toes and understand the mechanics, and uh, that's what what we've got to do. I mean, go in and take care of any problems. Mm -hmm. uh, v belt comes off a piece of equipment or a broken ch uh, a chain, broken sprocket take care of that. You know. Every day is different, very much so, yes. Figuring out, figuring out drives and speeds because of math. <laughs> and uh, yeah. if, you do, if you don't have no technical manuals or it, you're, you're punched, you, you, you won't be able to get it done. I mean, and the technology changes so much huh, through the course of time. Stay on top of math and, uh, and uh, I really don't know. I think it came from, from the higher ups because they s saw my capabilities and I stayed fairly busy and they'd taken, uh, okay, would you mind having becoming salary? And well, let me think about it. And I didn't think very long because uh, the challenge was there. And uh, I, you know, it come from upper, upper up, I mean, yeah, yeah, higher up. I mean, it come from higher up and I just went into the job, you know. And I had a mechanical ability, of course. And I've learned different things here. Like I say, when I started here, I, uh, and I used to do some machining at, at Pinkham's, but I started doing quite a bit here, and I, I learned even here, and I'd been at it for, what, 35 years, and I still learn. So you learn every day. And uh, it's like I say, I had a good time here, I had fun. Not after I got my feet wet, no, no. And I ended up. Like I say, when uh, when I left Pinkham's, they told me to leave. 
I, I ended up uh, picking up a job in uh, Connecticut because I was a contractor and I spent a month there and uh, helped set in, uh, put in a carriage in a hardwood sawmill just like this mill here. A little smaller but yeah and that was an experience. Yeah. I even learned something there so mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know. And I've seen all kinds. I've seen all kinds of maintenance people. And you have some that are very, very good in one part. A good welder or a good fabricator. But as far as the mechanic part of the operation, you know, in a sawmill, you got to do be able to do everything and I was just thinking about that because right now I'm putting windows in my house and if you've got a, a millwright that owns a home and he does his own work he's going to do a good job at a sawmill because it, it's needed I mean at and I've, I've seen it I've seen it the Pinkham lumber was connected to a, a paper mill and and it was a union shop and the mill, the sawmill was union shop, and you get five or six different people just to do a small job, like a balance a wheel, a, a band mill wheel. You had the driver to drive these people there, and then you had the guy that would put the instruments on, and the guy that would put the block there, and then the guy that would weld the block there. It, it, Sawmill can't afford that. Can't. You got to be able to do everything. That's what we were doing. Do everything. You got to be able to do everything. You know. I don't know why not. I think it's great. I think it's great. I just know a little bit about everything. Just not, you know, a lot about. Like I wouldn't do surgery on anybody, but. I'd, I'd like to look, <laughs> you know. I mean, you got to be able to do a little bit of everything, you know, especially in a sawmill. Mm -hmm. And and you can't do it all in six months. No, no, no. Five years, four or five years. I'm serious. You know, you can say you're a millwright, you know, but the minute you walk in the building, holy smokes intimidating, especially the sawmill at Pinkham's back then. It was the biggest one this side of Mississippi. You know, so mm -hmm. you had to be on your toes. I started in 67. 50? 50? Yeah. And I've been stopped for four years, but I'm still in and out of here, you know, I still came in and, you know, 50 years, and it's been great, a good 50 years. I've educated four kids, and uh, they're all doing good, and the sawmill paid for that. I said the last 10 years was right here, and this was great. I think it was because I came in here, I was, what, 60? And there wasn't anybody here in, on, the, on the maintenance crew. I think the oldest was made, might have been 50. Yeah, 50, the greaser, 50. And uh, I just had a blast. I mean, it was fun. They, you know, I, I said, listen, there's some things physically I can't do. And they said, well, don't worry about it. We'll help you. And sure enough, I get help and I had a good time. I had a good time with these people. And they're good millwrights. They had, you know, and it's like, again, you have some that real, real good certain things and mediocre other things, but all in all, good, good, good crew. They had fun. I had fun. You know, and worked as a team. Mm -hmm. Worked as a team. Pinkham was like that also. I don't know if I'd change anything. I mean, 
Oh, it's had its ups and downs, I mean, but uh, I, I really don't know if I would change anything. I, and it's not like I, I end up not knowing something, because that happens. That would happen. And, uh, but you take the information, you look at it, you take a few pages in the technical manual, and hold, and, and be able to understand it. Yeah, I found that out in the service, and uh, I, like everybody else, I went to high school, graduated from high school, and had a hard time. And, uh, in English especially, but uh, you read something, if you don't understand it, read it again, and that's what happens. I wouldn't change anything. I don't think I'd change anything. No. Uh, everything went well. I mean, and it, it's not its not all rosy now. Don't get me wrong. You know that. I mean, you're going to have days where you're going to have problems. You just iron the problems out. And, and that's even happening today. And, and since I've been out of, well, since I've retired, I get pick up these odd jobs where the pay isn't very good. Like, on the board for Ashland Water and Sewer, and things come up, and you try to help these people out, you know, so. It's, mm -hmm. I don't think I, no, I wouldn't change anything. It's been a good life, you know, and, and, and you got sawdust in the blood. That well, the thing is, uh, when I was salary, I was in charge of, uh, the last part of my work as a salaried individual in the sawmill, I was maintenance and construction superintendent for the plant. And that's the whole plant. And we had people start leaving. And a fellow put in his notice, and I went to the boss and I says, how can I help you? And he looked at me and he says, would you be able to take care of the log yard and the landfill? And I looked at him and I says, yeah, of course, you got to thinking. And then I just figured out what people they had doing that. Now the log yard had a couple, three, four people that would unload the logs, pile them in the log yard, and they knew their job and they did a good job. All you had to do was supervise. Landfill, same way. You had an individual that took care of that, and all you had to do was supervise, report, go see them and say, hey, I'm your new boss. <laughs> do what you have to do. And that's what, that's what happened. I mean, yeah. And that was, you know, and, and, and when they, they saw me, I mean, the mill manager and the mill owner, saw that happening, well, they'd just come back to me and say, can you handle this, can you handle that? And I just picked up extra work. And at the end, I was taking care of shipping, uh, construction, maintenance construction. Of course, you had people. All you do is delegate and uh, go from there. I feel, and I still feel that today, is try to use everybody fair. When you have uh, a crew of people and you're gonna have great, great Granny Smith apple and you're gonna have a rotten apple there, what do you do? You gotta use them fair. That's what's hard. That's what was difficult. If they wanna be a maintenance person, do your math. Do your math. Then, Take a second, uh, a couple years of technical college in the, in, the, in the mechanic field. And if they've worked, and still, you're going to have an individual, and that's just the same thing with me. I had two years of technical college, and I worked one summer, and I still, like I say, the first day I went over to look for a job at the sawmill, I was just horrified. I was like, holy smokes, I turned around and home. Because I just, you know, and uh, I made the change three, four days later, and it's been great ever since. 
And it's not that it's been rosy. I mean, you've had bad days and good days and bad weeks and good weeks, you know. Bad three, four months. And again, we installed a hydraulic drive on a planar feed. Just maintenance, and the, the guys did it, did a wonderful job. And there was a problem, overheat, and couldn't get up to speed, and we played with that and messed with that. And we didn't know why, till we had an individual walk in the shop that would, had a hydraulic company, and it's frustrating because <laughs> the print was sitting on the table. We'd been at this for a while. And he looked at it and said, it ain't going to work. It took him five minutes to look at the print. It ain't going to work. It's going to overheat, he said. Mobile, holy smokes. That was a, a good day. That, that day was a good day because you just changed that valve, moved and worked fine after that. And just one of those things that the engineers missed or something on a print. And, and we, I didn't. We didn't. There was two or three of us worked at it for... We still ran, but not as efficient as it should have ran. So that was a bad, bad deal. That was one of the bad deals. Do you want to know another one? Another one that had to do with finances. We were connected to a paper mill. We scraped for everything we we we, we needed. Everything we, we had. They wanted good chips, and we gave them good chips from the res residual wood and we were going to put in a curve sawing machine for uh, to maximize yield on a curved log and the engineer drew it all up said we're not going to get we're not going to get it approved anyway he says so he cut it bare bones when he turned it in they says yeah put it in so he looked at me and he says George what are we going to do what do you mean well, there's no money there for a building. This had to go in a separate building attached to the mill. Oh, not good, not good, no money. So I went to see my boss and I says, what do you want it to do? He said, put the building in and it's $200,000. How do you want me to do that? Do the best way you can <laughs> without using any money that's, you know, you got it. So I, that's what I did. I just scraped here and scrounged and everything else. And uh, I got two calls from the bean counter. And it just happened to be a lady. And it's the first time and the only time I've seen a bean counter that had common sense. And she cussed me out, said, why are you doing those with that, that with those numbers and all this? I said, well, so we got no money. And she says, come and see me. So we sat down and ironed it out and scraped and scrounged and we got the building up. So that was a, another, you know, horror show. And we did everything we could to, to keep the thing running and uh, cut corners. And that's why when you have a maintenance man, he should be capable of doing everything. Everything. And I've seen that right here right there, put in the door. Why hire a carpenter to put that door in? Maintenance people can do that. You know, that's, that's what it is. If an individual has owned a home and he does all his work, he should be capable of, of being a halfway decent maintenance man. Yes, yes. He wants to. If he wants to. He can't start at the top. He can't start at the top. And it's not that. Uh, I mean, financially, we everybody goes through it. You gotta do your thing, and uh, you watch your pennies because you need them. It is. Is is. And that's where cost comes in. Uh, you take an individual on the street, comes in here, and he goes to work as a production person. 
and he says, listen, this would work so much better if there was a hydraulic cylinder right here. Has no clue, has no clue what the cost is. The hydraulic cylinder costs 600 bucks. You need a pump, you need piping, you need oil, oil. you know, you need the controls. And when you're done, you're looking at $6,000. They have no clue. Okay? That's one thing. The, 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 the guy on the street thinks it's so simple to come in and say, do this here, this. They don't understand. And that's the same with any piece of equipment. You know, it's got to, you've got to, and, and they don't know. It's, it's not their fault. They just don't know. They don't know. And I didn't know. Fifty years ago, I didn't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it's true. I mean, today I do. It's great. A friend of mine told me, he said, if you've got anything to do before you retire, do it, because after you retire, you won't have time. And he was right. He was right. I, I stayed fairly busy. Oh no, I'm coming in here Saturday to do some work for Ashland Water and Sewer. I mean, it's like everything else, they need uh, they need some help. So I figured I'm capable of helping them. And I'm gonna help. Them. Yeah. Just just as a point, not well, not related. Last summer, last winter, we had problems with pumps, Ashland Water and Sewer, and we called pump people. They come in. Change a pump on a Saturday, cost us four thousand dollars. And I looked at what they did, and I says, I talked to the guy in charge. I says, there's no reason why we can't do that ourselves. And he felt the same way. Says, but we're going to need some tools. Hey, don't worry about that. We can get you the tools. So, you know, we're going to pull them again in August there. But uh, we got the tools. Of course, I made some of them, and I intend to make some more. <laughs> but anyway, that's what it is. I mean, I like to stay busy. It's family. It's really family, you know, because we we just work together. And uh, I'll tell you one thing. When I was told to leave at Pinkham's, it was hard because we were family. It was hard, and I had a hard time drive by the entrance if you drove by that Irving sign there now. But it, it was hard because we were family, right or wrong. We were. Yeah, and, and here it was the same way. You get involved here with a uh, bunch of young people and uh, had a blast. You know, it was nice. It was a good place to work. I stayed in Fort Kent, but we traveled. I traveled for a year. See, I, uh, uh, when I got out of the service, I had no place to stay. And I ended up at, uh, in Fort Kent at an apartment that my mother-in-law had. And she was moving out, going someplace else. And I says, and we got an apartment right on Main Street. And the company would pick me up there and bring me to work, right, right here in Ashland at the sawmill and bring me back. And it, of course, I was young then. It took me a year to figure out this, this don't hack it. You're on the road for an hour, an hour and 10 minutes because you drop different people off. I said, no, nah, no. Nah. So I looked around for rents and I uh, didn't really find any. And the house I'm in now uh, was come up for sale and I bought it. Now, this is, this is a tickler. You want some history? The individual was going to finance me. He says, give me 35, and he wanted 13.5 for the house. He says, give me 3,500 and $1,000 a year. So I says, great. So I talked to my dad, and he said, boy, that's a good deal. Did I have $3,500? No. So I walked into Pinkham's office, and I says, listen, I, I, I looked all over. And I can't find anybody that wants to give me $3,500. No problem, she says. Come with me. Went right to the bank. He signed the note. 
they gave me $3,500. I bought the house, and every raise after that went toward that $3,500. You know? mm. That's one reason why I moved here. And uh, I, I think it's a great place to stay, a great place to live. I've still got two kids here, the twins, two houses down on my side of the street and the other ones across the street from my house. So, And she's one of them is the one that helped me last week. She was on vacation and she came up and we put staging up. We're going to change windows in the house. So, But that's why I bought the house I'm in. Yes, they're good demolitioners, <laughs> both of them. And they're good workers. They're very good workers. And the youngest daughter's in Fort Kent, and she's doing all her own stuff. She does. I did help her last summer put siding on the house. We we put vinyl siding on her house, but then she takes care of everything else. She even brags about changing the toilet. And, oh yeah, you know. So, but anyway. And the oldest, love him dearly. He's an engineer. <laughs> And uh, he does, he, they're all good kids. They're all, yeah, we have fun. I'll tell you one thing. Four years, three, four years ago, I, uh, I said, Barb, that's my wife, I said, I gotta fix that foundation under the front porch. It's sinking. And, and we had a little bit of money, so who am I gonna get to help me? So I called my grandson. I says, Carson, what are you doing this summer? He says, I'm going to work for Michel. I says, can I use you for three weeks? Sure, he says. So I hired him, and he started there 15th of May. And last of August, I had to fire him because I had run out of money. <laughs> we had so much fun that summer. You know, you raise your kids, and you're working full bore. Now, hey, I'm retired. and He's working with me, and I told this fine body of a man right here, so I'm going to keep up with that 19-year-old, almost put me in the grave. <laughs> <laughs> really, yeah, uh, but we had a good time. We bonded and had a real good time, you know, so it was a good deal for another good worker, you know, you know so, but anyway, he's in the Air Force now, so I can't really use him. I'd like to, but every time I talk to him, I suppose I miss you, Carson. Because these old bones, once you get down on the floor there, you can't get back up. <laughs> but that's what I had him doing. They've got to come into a place like this. Now remember, I came here at the age of 60, I think, close to 60. And I'm going to mention his name, Dan Bullier. He's, he was the maintenance guy in charge of maintenance. Great individual. Yeah, I even learned a lot from him, and I was 60 years old. So, you know, yeah, that's what you got to do. You got to get connected with somebody like that. Yeah. Now, I'm not sure on the sawmills local who's. I know some of the people that are in charge, but I, you know, I don't know their their capabilities. And and, and, and you're right. It's difficult. It's difficult if you're looking for somebody to be able to go in and take care of. Of uh, maintenance, I mean production equipment in a sawmill. They gotta be. They gotta know what they're doing. You know? I just had a blast. I mean, it was fun. They, you know, I, I said, listen, there's some things physically I can't do, and they said, well, don't worry about. It. We'll help you. And sure enough, I get help, and I had a good time. I had a good time with these people.